So I'm here at Walmart. We're gonna do a 48 hour. This is a nice spot actually. The idea of this challenge is to show you the items I have and how I can use them. Crinkle a corner up. Yeah, I got one. Maybe a little silly. You get the idea. Hi, I'm Greg Ovens, and this is Ovens Rocky Mountain Bushcraft. I'm here at Walmart and we're gonna do a 48 hour survival challenge for under $100 like Zach did and you get to see what items I might choose differently. I heard that uh, Walmart is giving away free turkeys to everyone who can outrun security but I'm not that fast. Three for six bucks. It's a pairing knife. So I'm mostly going with fish and stuff. I mean, I'm gonna get some garbage bags. So definitely under a hundred bucks. But I will get a lighter. That's about it. I mean, I don't even need this stuff. I could have just bought food. But, uh, so even that little bit of stuff, one little bag was 75 bucks. That's unreal. Boy, cost of stuff nowadays, eh? I didn't even get much. So I will just go over the items that I got. It's hard to believe, like the price of everything. Let's go over that first. I mean, you know, the... The most expensive item was the coffee, but I like to have my coffee. Now, like this is only a two night thing. So it's not like you wouldn't even need food or water. The plants are out, I mean, I could have just bought some beans and this and that. And But the idea of this challenge is to show you the items I have and how I can use them. And some of them are very useful, but I did not want to go without some fishing line and a few hooks and my pink maps. You know, last video I uh, caught, was it four or five salmon on my pink maps. Anyway, uh, the other expensive thing was garbage bags, like eleven ninety seven. I always uh, usually have garbage bags in my truck because they're they're very useful like in an emergency even a survival situation as I'm going to show you a couple of things you can use them for some duct tape uh, just regular hooks three cans of dog food only like three dollars and if I get real hungry I'll eat one of Finn's uh, cans of food I'm sure he won't mind I mean I do a lot for him too a paring knife. I mean, a knife is very handy. And I got him to throw in a lighter. Those are the items. I will bring the bag they gave me, put it all back in there. We're just gonna park up here and uh, hike into this little lake that should have some fish. I'll just use hand line or make uh, something for casting to try to catch these fish. If I don't catch fish, uh, there's thimbleberries, there's other things out. Um, some things aren't ready, some are, but I happen to notice here because you remember the story of the, the black twin berries. I see some red twin berries here. They're just like the black ones, but since I told you that story and I haven't seen any red ones, I figure I may as well show you. So that's the red twin berries. We have both colors here, but usually it's the black. I don't see the red too often. You know, I got to talk about this once more because my last adventure, you remember I stayed in the motel, got eaten alive by bed bugs. I saw this bug on the pillow. 
It's 10 times worse than mosquito bites. I don't even want to go out in public. And I'm just paying the price. I'm still itchy. That was a week ago. And uh, boy, oh boy, you know, the first time that I stay in a motel and in a bed in months, and that's what I get. It's almost like somebody is telling me, why did you do that? Why didn't you sleep in your truck or in your hammock or on the ground somewhere? You know, I'm scarred up for life all over the place. It's just ridiculous. Over a stupid bug, can you imagine? And uh, just something I never do. I always sleep on the ground or in my hammock or in the truck. And I sure regret it. I sure regret that. Never again, I can tell you that. Can't stop scratching these bites. But we will survive. In 48 hours, we'll use all these items, I'm sure. And I think you'll find it interesting how I use the items. Finn, everybody wants to say hi and you're off there wandering around. Come, come say hi up here. Here, you gotta sit, see? Oh, there's the Finns. He's gonna be fine because he's got food. Yeah. Okay, let's get going, Finns. Parked right by some bear scat. That's fine. I'm just going to leave the windows down. I'll bring the keys, obviously. But you know what? I think it's a mistake out here to lock your doors, lock it all up. I've never been broken into out in the bush. And I think by leaving the windows down and stuff, they think, oh, well, people are right here. You lock it all up. They break in. They'll just smash your windows anyway. There's nobody around to watch your vehicle. So... I think it's uh, just easier to leave it all open, windows down, and then they think, well, somebody's right here somewhere, so they just leave it alone. I've had good success with that anyway, but I don't know. Luck could change, I guess. Just like my luck sleeping in a bed. Look at what it does to you. Stick. There it is. Bring it. Now we're on the trail. Whew. Gotta crawl under stuff, over stuff, but it's not a huge deal. We gotta find somewhere. <clears throat> somewhere to stay. There's lots of moss here though, so should be good. I see a nice spot actually with some moss back here. I think that'll work just fine. I think this is gonna be it. It's hot out. And that's that's the reason I didn't even bring a like a coat, because it's been so hot out, you don't need bedding, you don't need any of that. So I'm not even worried about it, I'm just sweating. It'll be nice when it cools down at night. I don't need blankets in this. So anyway, I might have time to just get a line in the water. The lake's right here. I'm just gonna sleep on this moss. I've done it a thousand times, so I'll do it again. Try a cast so that we have something for the morning. Maybe to cook up. I'll take all the garbage with me when I go. I don't uh, leave anything in the bush when I go. Not even a scrap of paper. That seems fairly sharp. For a cheap knife. Didn't seem too bad. Oh, Finn, he's so happy out here. He, he wouldn't care. He wouldn't care where you were. He'd be happy. Hey, Finn. Okay. Let's sit up. No, 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 no. There goes the camera. Thanks again, Finns. You do it a lot. <laughs> You seem to dock the camera quite a bit, Finn. So I'm just gonna try a hook and a worm. I dug a worm up on the way, a couple. Put in my pocket here. Find a stick for a bobber and two feet of line. Stick here, that'll give me weight to get it out there. I usually wrap it twice and then tie it. Okay, so 
Then I just throw my stick out, let it sit, and hope for the best. Wish me luck. A fish should be nice. It's not far out, but probably far enough. They're either biting or they're not. See if my stick goes. Well, I managed to get snagged anyway, so try again tomorrow. There is a creek not too far that usually has some smaller pan fries, but we'll see how that goes. I mean, but it's always nice to get out here. It is. Yeah, you almost lose hope when you're just not getting bites. They're not jumping really. Go to bed. It's almost dark anyway. Hey Finn, watch, watch the camera this time, please. Yeah, I know you're hungry. I know. Okay, Finn. Well, tomorrow's another day. I know you're probably hungry. I won't put it right on my bed, will I? There. And then you won't get my bed covered. Tomorrow for my coffee, I can wash his can out so I can boil water and have my coffee. That's quite the noise, Finn. You think you can make some more noise? This is what you call roughing it, Finn. Roughing it. Uh, I tell you, like, I really like these outings where you get to just sleep on the ground. Mosquitoes, they, they don't seem to be an issue anymore. You knocked the camera over already once, Finn. Um, now you're trying to poke my eye out. I'm trying to talk to the camera. <laughs> oh, Finn. He doesn't get it. No, lie down over here. No, come on, you're going to either take my eye out or smash the cameras. He just won't quit with the stick. It's hard to do video with him sometimes, it really is, but... Oh, he's a good companion out here. Um, it's not like I have a rifle or bear spray even. And he'll let me know if anything comes around. Okay, it's bedtime, Finn. It's bedtime. Actually, this stick will work pretty good for a pillow. Okay, let go of that. Okay, lie down. You're not going to lie down until it's pitch black out, are you? I bet if I throw it that way, you could knock the camera right over and smash it. And then I can just buy a new one. How would that be? See ya. <laughs> you don't need blankets. You don't really need a coat. I mean, I'm just sweating. I can't wait till it cools down. And maybe in the morning we can catch uh, breakfast. We'll see how that goes. Okay. Morning. Whew. Look out of the way, Finn. Not first thing in the morning. <laughs> first thing till last thing at night. Stick, stick, stick. The ground is too dry. It's been hot. No rain for a while. I'm surprised there's not a fire ban yet. But this is the kind of ground I don't want to have a fire on because it could spread underground in this rotten stump and type material. Just not a safe place. If I'm going to have coffee, then I'll have to go down to the creek where there's rocks and it's a better situation. This moss is so dry. It's just not a safe place to have a fire. So we're going to give up on the coffee for the morning and see about a fish. And then head down to the creek, I think. Hard to operate a hand line in these conditions, actually. A lot of grass and stuff to grab the line. And sticks. That'll work. Just leave that and watch it. Give it a try for a little bit. Okay, I think I got one. Bobber's going. Yeah, I got one.
Now we just got to go somewhere where we can have a fire. Can't do it here. Now I'm set. Get some berries and stuff. Maybe try again in the creek, I don't know. But I'm good for the day. I just seen the bobber moving just a bit. And sure enough, had one on there. It's pretty cool. Well, because I don't have ice, I'll have to cook this guy up fairly quick. I got my fish. Finn's already in there. He must be thirsty. I gotta clean my fish off. Get it in the creek. Go, Finn, please. Go. Well, I know uh, a lot of you like to learn about plants and I just noticed when I was watching the last scene there, cleaning the fish, that uh, there was this plant hanging in the middle of the screen when I was cleaning the fish. So there's a trivia for you. What was that plant? I know what it was, but keep you guys on your toes and try to figure out what that plant was. Anyway, got to find a place to cook that fish. I mean, it's hot out. Not gonna last too long. It doesn't look ideal right here. We'll take a little hike up the creek and try to find a suitable spot. We'll build it beside the creek. Then when we're done cooking, we can just put the fire out because I don't want to. Well, you have to put your fire out. I mean, that's the sensible thing. But have it right beside the creek. So we got the water and this and that. It's not windy out. It's uh, not a threat here by the creek like it was at the other spot there. So then I can have my fish and my coffee. I don't know if there's fish in the creek or not. Um, maybe, but I've got my fish, so it doesn't really matter. Um, there's berries I can collect and this and that. We did find the first night. Um, I wasn't hungry anyway. Uh, you know, one or two days without food is not an issue for me. Uh, once it gets three, four, five days, well, then it becomes difficult. Yeah, this should work right here. Don't knock the camera over, please, Finn. Yeah, almost. It's the only safe place to have a fire to cook our fish up, so... I don't need much of a fire to get the uh, fish cooked. And I don't think I'm going to have coffee even because it's getting later in the day. I don't really feel like coffee anymore. This is not the sharpest knife. It's not like the ones I'm used to. It's a paring knife, but not that sharp, really. Having trouble getting it through. Point broke off. Oh, poking yourself, too. Like a hot dog roast.
Well, the head fell off, so I know it's done. Mm. That's pretty tasty. I am hungry, too. Small fish, but this is what I need. Like the cheeks, too. It's a little piece, but mm, very tasty little rainbow. That'd be just great smoked. Smoked the whole thing. I'm not going to let anything go to waste on this guy. I might try to see if there's any fish in the little creek, but I pretty much had to eat this guy. I mean, without ice or anything like that, I had to cook it right away. Nothing's gonna stay very long in the heat. It's been so hot. Finally, towards morning, it gets cool enough. You can actually sleep. This fish is cooked just right. Now the flies want their share. Come get your own fish. Two female spruce grouse enjoy a relaxing evergreen stroll in the dappled light of the midday Rocky Mountain bush, foraging for a coniferous snack on the forest floor. What's this? A confident young male approaches, his striking red eyebrow comb ablaze against the otherwise earth-toned background. This patch of crimson can be enlarged at will, indicating he is seeking a mate. The male eagerly struts towards one of the ladybirds, swishing his tail and bobbing, performing his best courtship display. She seems interested, but for a moment. Perhaps she's somewhat confused. You see, this ritual is well outside the typical springtime mating season for spruce grouse. While the display was a nice gesture, the male's ill-timed eagerness is a turn-off for the female, and she walks away. The rejected male is fine with this result, as he already had plans to eat gravel with the boys at a campground later that day. I'm going away from the creek. Um, I don't like to camp near the noise because if something shows up, I like to be able to hear. So. It's fairly grassy in here, probably not as good as near the lake where there was kind of the moss, but that fish was adequate. Uh, I've been nibbling on a couple of, uh, there's some Oregon grape here. Pretty sour, but I like them. So nibbling on some of them. There was thimbleberries, but now I don't see any. So find a spot to lie down. Mm, those are good, but this is not going to be as good as the moss. There's some grass, kanikanik. It'll still be better than sleeping in gravel or on rocks, I can tell you. This looks like a grassy spot right here. I think this will do. Right, fellas. Let's go. Uh, yeah, that's not bad. Oh. What a good boys. Yeah. Okay, Finwell. I guess this will be the spot. It's about the best I've found from here to the creek. There is an Oregon grape bush. That's what was poking me. So I'll clear that out of here. They have thistles on them. Maybe throw some grass down. Might do that. So, we don't want to... 
It's not you that time, Finn. That, I knocked it over. That was me. For once, it wasn't you. I don't mind sleeping on the ground, you know. Uh, one thing it does is it... It's not as comfortable as the hammock, so then... When you get back to the hammock, you uh, always appreciate the hammock more. That's for sure. So... But, you know, I slept fine last night. I've slept hundreds of times on the ground, just on the ground, or moss beds, probably. And you can actually make them fairly comfortable. I'll just throw some more grass. Make sure there's no sticks and whatever to poke you. Or like that Oregon grape that I was leaning on, poking me. And we'll be good. A little bump here in my head. It'll work just fine. Actually, this is a perfect indent here. Mosquitoes aren't bad. You hungry? You hungry? Can I have some? Can I have some, Vince? <laughs> You know, he's, uh, he's one of those kind of dogs that, uh, you know, you can take, you can put your hand there, you could take his food away, he doesn't growl, nothing. A lot of people's dogs, I mean, if you try to do that, they're, they're just going to bite you. So, he's just not that way. Oh, oh boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> no, go lay down. Go lay down now. So one thing I notice is uh, the days are certainly getting shorter. That is noticeable. Um, I tend to go to bed before it's totally dark, but then sometimes I sleep in like I did. And that was cool seeing the uh, spruce grouse too. Um, that male grouse, he was strutting around those little females. Somehow he thinks it's mating time. It's it's not even the right time of year. That was pretty funny. Uh, she's putting on a show and it's not even mating season for the grouse. That was pretty funny. I'll see you in the morning. And we'll wrap this video up. And hopefully you've enjoyed the adventure so far. And uh, it's not over quite yet. I think Finn hears something. <laughs> That's one thing, you know, like... Uh, I sure feel a lot better having him around. You know, like I've had a lot of sleepless nights on the ground by myself before I got Finn. I mean, there's grizzly bears, black bears, cougar out here. I certainly sleep a lot better having him around. But then it makes you wonder when he barks at something. You know, I just got to make sure he doesn't wander off. And coyotes too, that worries me with him too. I gotta keep a close eye on him because of the coyotes too. Finn, stay here. Finn, Finn, come, come on. There he is. Okay, you stay here please. Lie down over here. Like you gotta stay, you gotta stay in camp, Finn. You can't be wandering off. There's things with a lot bigger teeth than you out there. You know, you think you're all tough, but you know, look at your big white teeth, but there's stuff with bigger teeth than you. Morning. A little bit of prickles in the back of my head, but pretty good. So, slept in again by the looks of it. But, you know, I do a lot of sleeping in nowadays, it seems. Wait till the heat of the sun comes out and get moving. So, we'll head back to the creek and uh, have some coffee this time. In all honesty, like, you know, like, other than not have, being able to have a fire at the lake. Yeah, stuff stuck in my hair like crazy. Uh, other than <clears throat> the fact that 
it just was not a good spot for a fire i didn't like the looks of the water even for boiling i mean it was full of algae and bugs and not that bugs are going to kill you but just dirty algae filled uh, water the lake Come on, Finn. Let's go. You know the way. I'll follow you, Finn. You eat grass now, do you? pretty hot out you know there's just creeks everywhere like you don't have to go far to find another creek this is a different creek than the one where we cooked our fish and uh, you know sometimes you only have to go like 200 feet and you got another creek so and I see some thimbleberries might grab a few of those too oh, dropped one. Anytime you can get even just a few berries Helps on the energy level Mind you, I'm not really struggling that fish was good have my coffee a little creek like this isn't gonna have fish but Oh, I almost choked on that water. Ah. Almost, I did. Lots of nice moss here. This would have been a nice place to spend the night, but I just came across it now. So, yeah, we would have had our creek, the coffee water, and nice thick moss. But I'm not going to spend an extra night just because I found some nice moss now. Come on, get some water. Get in the creek, it's hot out. Gotta grab one would be good. And I managed to cut my hand trying to clean the can on the sharp lid. Oh well, part of being in the bush. Finally, some coffee. Cool enough now, grounds have gone to the bottom. Oh, coffee's good, Finn. No, no, please, please, please. Go find the stick, Finns. Just let me have my coffee, okay? You just won't leave me alone sometimes. Hmm.
so peaceful here. This is a nice little creek, but it won't have fish in it. But good fresh water coming out of the mountains for my coffee. And a good spot for my fire. But you noticed I just had a tiny little fire. I don't need a big fire just to do one cup of coffee. Mmm. Ah, that's good. There is another creek. I might try for another fish. I am a little bit hungry. Almost tempted to spend another night. Make it more than a 48 hour. Which should be fine. As long as you got food. I mean, 48 hours is nothing, right? It's when you don't have food. Then it's an issue. So, I'm going to take you back to another video first. You remember the 48 hour two item video? I collected moss for my raised bed. I was able to dry it out with the uh, hot rocks. Let's just say that you're in a situation where you either can't have a fire, or well, can't start a fire, whatever, and your moss is soaking wet. You can make a beautiful mattress with garbage bags, even if your moss is wet. Actually, these look like pretty good garbage bags. So, I mean, it's that simple. So, no matter how wet your moss is, you're going to have a nice mattress. That's the first little trick. I mean, some, uh, some of the things I'm going to show you in here are probably maybe just common sense. But sometimes, just by mentioning something, then people can figure it out. But, okay, so I didn't have a raised bed, let's say. Didn't have the hot rocks and the fire and uh, to dry the moss out. I can fill a couple of garbage bags with the wet moss. Doesn't matter how wet. And I still got a nice comfortable bed second you can make a tarp actually these are good strong garbage bags so cut down the seam some of the you know the cheaper garbage bags they'll tear so easy it'd be hard to make a tarp out of them this one these bags huh, seem pretty good this knife is not the sharpest either I mean, these are something that I always have in my truck. So now you've got a big wide piece. You see, that's, well, that's six feet now. You know that I sleep under trees a lot, but this would be ideal to attach to a tree with some boughs just for added protection from the rain. Quick tarp, quick lean to under a tree. Ideal. I got a couple I'm gonna just tape together. And duct tape is pretty good stuff too. I think I'm just gonna do two bags because I'm sure you get the idea. Probably run another row of tape. Duct tape is a great thing too. As you remember, Zach, he made a uh, kayak with duct tape. I thought that was pretty cool. Here we are, paddling home. <laughs> this thing maneuvers really well. Now you've got like a six, almost a six by six tarp. Now these are the big bags, which is what I usually carry. Let's see if we can utilize this for a shelter now. I'm going to use my duct tape instead of strings for my tarp. 
crinkle a corner up, wrap the tape, a couple of times, I'm gonna go around this big tree with the one corner. Twice, probably. And I can pull this one. Now, if I have other trees, which I, you know, I don't right here, but I can actually just tape a stick that's going to hold this down too. I actually decided just to stick my stick in the ground. Uh, it seems to be working better as far as like just pulling it tight. Um, you know, use your imagination sometimes. The ground is fairly soft here, so I can push these sticks in the ground, and unless we get a real wind, it should stay just fine. Hmm. Strong tape too. Okay, pull it fairly tight. Push it in the ground, if you can pound it better. I can run tape from here to another tree to support it if it gets windy. There you go. A tarp out of garbage bags. Now, some people are going to say, oh, well, that's not rocket science. That's just common sense. Well, it is common sense, but, you know, like garbage bags can be so handy. In a, just in a camping situation, obviously. Then some people can take their garbage back with them, too. So, small little shelter, but it's like six by almost six, I would say. Just out of two garbage bags, two large garbage bags. There you go. Nice tart. So now I've got a spot that's plenty adequate for me to stretch out, sleep. If it's raining, I'm fine. As long as we don't get a windstorm. And, you know, I like I put this thing together in just a few minutes. So if you have the time, you could add two more garbage bags. Now you've got a bigger tarp. You can take your tape, secure it to other trees, other branches, make it more secure if there is a wind. Because even if it's secured really well, it's not gonna blow away. So I would suggest you'd wanna take more time if you're spending the night to secure it better. But I'm just showing you the ideas. I don't wanna uh, spend hours just making this tarp shelter. That's how easy it can be though. Now, depending on how fancy you want to get, you wouldn't need a knife for this either. I'm going to go to the top side. I'm just going to bite a little hole. That's, huh? Lost my teeth anyway. I'll pick that up. Try to keep your hole fairly small. Your head's going to go through there. Come down about... A foot at least maybe 16 inches on the side same thing another hole there's the hole big enough for your arm but try to keep the hole small now you've got a uh, raincoat out of the garbage bag Get your arms through here down over you and look at how long that is covers my whole body I could sit under a tree be totally dry my arms at this point are going to get a little wet but I'm going to show you what we can do for that too but this thing will be like a skirt okay look at that it goes uh, down past my knees
So, that's going to keep you pretty dry in a rainstorm. You know, I'm talking pouring, pouring rain. This is going to keep you dry. Your hair is going to get wet, your arms are going to get wet. But, there's a solution to that too. So I'm going to take another garbage bag. I'm going to bite a hole in the end of it, bottom. Now what I'm going to do is take the open end and put through my garbage bag where my arms go. There's an armhole. I'm going to stuff that inside. I'm going to turn this inside out so that some of the garbage bags coming through where the armhole is couple little pieces of tape to hold it on the inside. Now I can put my arm through here. Okay, now it's all baggy floppy. So I'm going to twist it up and we're just going to take our duct tape and just wrap it. All right, won't stick to there. Sticking in the wrong spot. Now, see? Now, completely sealed. Because this seams on the inside taped. Water's gonna hit here, go out. If you're wearing a coat that's gonna absorb the moisture, get soaking wet, but that's how you could keep your entire upper body waterproof. Now I'm still going to show you that we need a hoodie. I'm going to keep these tabs on the top side. You'll see why later. And tape this seam together. Like that. So now it's half the size. I'm going to fold this again. Because I don't need this much material. Now, I'm going to tape this to the back of where my head comes out. Boy, this tape is so strong. And you know what? I'm going to put the other arm on, put it on, then you can see how it all works because for the sake of not doing the other arm, you want to see the complete gown, I'm sure. So there we go, a complete raincoat. Both arms taped inside. <laughs> Wearing one of these, you're ready for a fashion show in Paris. Okay, so all the way down, I had it past my knees, but once I put the, the arm thing on, it kind of lifted it up a bit. But regardless, find our hoodie which is here somewhere. There it is. Pull this. Now my head. And I can tie the straps. Except I can't see what I'm doing. Stretch them out a bit first. There we go. Now I can tie this. I look like uh, maybe a little silly, but if it's going to rain for a week and you got no raincoat, people die. They get hypothermia and they die in the rain. I could have arranged this a little different, but you get the idea. Oh, it's twisted. 
I don't think that matters though. Something's not quite right. It's always something, man. Like, why is that twisted like that? I think there's a... Oh, well, there's a piece of tape on it. That's why. Wondered what was going on there. A blooper. A piece of tape got on it and managed to foul me up. And actually, I can tie it behind my neck too. That's probably the best. Boy, I tell you what, man. Man from Glad, he'd be happy. Completely sealed, folks. I didn't quite get that tight enough, but there you go. You got your hoodie, you're completely covered. You can do the same with your legs. I'm not gonna get carried away. You get the idea. So I wanna thank you all for uh, watching the video. And I just wanna give you a heads up, you subscribers, viewers in general. I'm going on an epic, extensive, long adventure. So I know that you guys have been waiting for something like this for a long time. We're gonna do it. Make sure you watch the old videos. You can always gleam something. Uh, you watch it two or three times, you always uh, pick up something that you didn't uh, maybe remember. Uh, so I encourage you to do that while I'm gone doing this uh, epic adventure with a surprise guest. So, thanks for watching. Epic stuff on its way. There's the truck, fans. It was a bit of an adventure, but I liked it. I really did. I think Finn did too. Is the window down enough for you to get in? You gonna get in the truck? Get in the truck. Get in the truck. Get in the truck. Well, maybe it's not down enough for you. I don't know. It's not vandalized. Trying to get a cover photo.